So we always start this show by reading back something that somebody has posted online. And I had to scroll through for you, Jeffrey. I did a lot of scrolling because you you like do a lot of retweets. Do you know that about yourself? Yeah, I do. I do retweet a fair amount. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't really think about what I'm doing on Twitter. I just post whatever. There's no strategy. Do retweets equal endorsements for you? Uh, no, no. Retweets are just like train of thought. Okay. Here's what I found. So this is a quote tweet. So is it a subtweet? It's like a, I don't know, because now it's X. So a sub X. Here's the sub X that you did. So the, the original tweet said, the sound of freedom outgrosses Mission Impossible. And you quote tweeted that and said, the headline I never expected. Have you been genuinely shocked? by the impact that this film has made? Yes, yes, it's bigger than than I would have expected. I um I had I had big expectations for this project we did. Um we 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 looked at the pre-sales and but there's always this question mark in your head of will your kind of like I call it uh brute force marketing where you're just driving sales in through conversions and raw, raw stats, what happens when it tips? Like when, when it, when it, when it switches over from you're buying all the exposure and you're, 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 you're building the awareness through traditional, um, just by, by purchasing your way there versus it tips and every single person is talking about it and it's a must see and and there there's people dragging their friends out and so what what happens when it tips and you never know exactly like what the multiple will be after that that tipping point and sound of freedom definitely tipped in a bigger way than i i expected and i'm so excited honestly to talk to you today about that i heard you say on another podcast interview you did i did some stalking of you you said Angel Studios is a disruptor to the Hollywood space. What do you mean by that? We're serving unserved markets. There, Hollywood is in this kind of a bubble that's created by the Hollywood gatekeepers. If you go to LA, if you want to, um, I don't know where you're at, uh, Heather, if you're in LA, but. I'm in St. Joe, Michigan, where there's two stoplights, but tell me about the city. Tell me what I'll find. <laughs> okay. All right. Just make it so when you go to LA, it's um it like people talk about how uh you know, I'm in Utah and people say, Oh, Utah's like a bubble. And I'm like, Well, th there's no bubble bigger than the LA bubble. Like it is the bubble of all bubbles. And everybody has their um to the point that one of the producers on um he produced music for for the film at the end, the, the final music. And he was in LA and he said that um he said somebody found out after a whole dinner that he was a that he's a Christian. And they turned to their friend and they're like, see, I told you, Christians are people too. <laughs> so there, but there is kind of like a, I mean, they had become really good friends th during that meal, and there was just kind of like this, this um it, it, there's a bubble element there. And so I, um, when you, when you, when you're looking at that and then the way that things have been done for the last decades, it's there, we are coming in and we're doing everything different. So the, the, the problem we see with the Hollywood system, best filmmakers are, come out of LA, best artists come out of LA, um, craftsmen are coming out of LA and and the, the Hollywood system is producing amazing talent where it's broken, where we believe it's broken is in the gatekeepers. And so you have people who don't have the same value sets as main, the middle, like heartland America, or even the world making all the decisions of what comes in and what goes out. And they do a great job with, diversity of skin color, diversity of um, sexual orientation. They, 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 do, they do those well. They're representing, probably over-representing some areas. But where they miss is like diversity of actual ideas and diversity of faith. And because you look at 
just the, the U.S. population, you have 60 plus percent of Americans are religious and they believe in God and they go to church every week. And it's probably even higher than that. But let's and then there's a group of them that are very religious. And then you watch movies or watch film, the content coming out of Hollywood, and it's just basically like non-existent. So there's not like a true representation of what the they may have a representation of what the the culture looks like or what uh, different skin color, different uh, certain types of like aesthetic diversity, but from a faith world or from a ideological world, the diversity is not very strong. And we think we can fix that by fixing the gatekeepers. And, but why do you, and you may not be prepared to answer this question. And if you're not, it's okay. Why do you think that is? So I'm a communication professor and I work with young people and what I hear all the time, actually I'm in a film program. I don't teach in the film program, but we have one. And I hear all the time, why is it that there's no good, we have the Bible has some of the best stories, right? And yet there's so few good examples of it being told by storytellers. Why? All of early Hollywood is this way. I mean, all, the, the, the glory days, you got 10 commandments, you have Ben-Hur, like they were the top of the top. They were the biggest budgets, the best filmmakers, the best craftsmen. And it has shifted um, over time where it's a, I mean, the way, I, the best way for me to describe what's coming out of Hollywood the primary stuff that's coming out of Hollywood and that the gatekeepers are letting through is nihilism. Every single film you watch and, and, and people are sick of it. People, people are tired of nihilistic stuff. This is the reason why I think in 2020 when the pandemic hits and everybody's hunkering down in their houses because they're not sure what this is going to look like that the chosen takes off because people, they have all this nihilistic content that's dark and heavy and very, like the, the moral of every story is everybody's bad, <laughs> you know, like you get done and all the good guys switch to bad guys and all the good bad guys switch and everything's mixed up and mushy on a, like a, a principle level and the chosen comes out and it just has a real clear distinction. What is good and what is evil is very clear in a, in a really good storytelling environment. And so people, people are drawn to, um, to something that's filled with more light rather than just nihilism. And I would say The Chosen, I'm a big fan of The Chosen. By the way, it's a top five TV series. If you have been living under a rock and you haven't seen it, you absolutely have to watch this show. Truly changed the game, I think, um, on Christian content. I have many times paused it because I'm just weeping. And I think part of it is not just, it's the authenticity to even the time I think that's displayed. The one I'm thinking of is the woman at the well. That scene so rarely, and just as a woman who works in ministry, so rarely do people accurately portray that. And that show did. And I've, I've just been blown away by it. Do you know why? What would you say contributed to the frozen frozen to the chosen's success uh so the chosen comes in at a um so i i'm a strong believer in what's called the user method uh if there's a there's a book you can get it on audible it's called the user method by jeff schwarting and it goes through case studies it's a not a very big book but it's very like it's super impactful to the way i think and in it he goes through and he talks about how most of the massive global brands that we know the majority of them came from somebody who was doing what's called the user method, which means they're solving a problem for themselves. So an example would be uh, the Airbnb founders. They're trying to figure out how do we pay our rent in San Francisco? And they come up with an idea to run down the street, buy some air mattresses for a convention that's close by. And then they take those air mattresses, blow them up, put them on their floor, and then they throw on Craigslist a listing saying, hey, you can stay right next to the convention center for much cheaper if you just want to stay on air mattresses. And they were able to pay their rent. And so they started a business solving this problem of saying, how do we get it to where other uh, renters can pay rent if they live next to conventions? And they called it Airbnb, the air, bread, air mattress bed and breakfast. 
And slowly that has turned by listening to customers and building what they would hope to see. They, they have turned it into something that's bigger than any hotel chain. Another example would be Steve Wozniak. He hated co the computers that existed. And so he just said, I'm going to make my own computer that I like. And he and Steve Jobs realized later that it's a computer lots of people would like. And, um, and so it goes through and gives example after example after example of founders that are building what they want to see. And so Angel Studios, when I watched The Shepherd, this was in 2017, um, late 2017, The Shepherd is the very first film that Dallas made a little short film for his church about this little shepherd cripple boy. And when I watched it, I just was like, I want more of this. Like, this is, this is what we want out of a Bible movie or a Bible TV series would be this type of content. And so I, I called Dallas and I talked to him and eventually we, we came to um, a deal where we were just like, hey, let's, let's get together. And for Angel Studios, let's build our uh, Game of Thrones, our house of cards, the, the, and he and Amanda, we, we met in Utah and chatted about it. And, um, eventually we came, we came and said, we're going to do this. We're going to pull the trigger. And we, the goal was to build it out of crowdfunding, but, but just getting back to why this is working is because we're building as angel studios content that we want our families to see. I, I wanted, and my brothers, co-founders of Angel Studios, wanted the content Dallas is creating. That's, that's what we wanted in our homes. And it, and it happens to work for millions and millions or 100 plus million people around the world the same way. It's what they want to see too. And so there weren't focus groups. Like we were told by investors, by industry experts, there have been a million Jesus movies Going after another Jesus movie or series is just like, you're, ju you're just a voice in the crowd. This has been done a hundred times. And our answer is, well, it hasn't been done like this. We, we think this will work. So, uh, yeah. So user method.